In this video, we're going to look at the potential energy questions from the mechanisms and structures course notes. And before we look at the questions, we'll look again at the formula for potential energy we've been given to work with in the course, which is E subscript P, which represents potential energy, is equal to M, which is mass, G, the acceleration due to gravity that acts on any object on Earth, multiplied by h. And h is um, in meters, it's the height, and specifically it's the height above the datum, which really means the height at which the object could fall through and release this potential energy. So in every scenario we encounter, it's not always going to be the height above the ground, it might be the height about above some level in which um, we could actually fall. So if we have something on a table from the fourth floor of the building, we're not talking about the height um, from ground level, we're talking about the height from the table to the floor of that particular level of the building. So, question one. Baggage handles and airport with suitcases on a conveyor belt, which lifts them up to the hold of the aeroplane, calculate the potential energy when a 20 kilogram suitcase is at the top of the belt. So potential energy is all about where something is, not how it got there. So yes, there will be a journey, and depending on the steepness of this um, conveyor belt, it will take longer or shorter for the case to stay at the top. We're not interested in that journey, we're interested in where the case is when it's at the top. And what we know is that the mass is equal to 20 kilograms, and the height that we're interested in is 3.5 metres. And one thing I should write at the top is G is equal to 9.81 metres per second squared, or ms minus 2. Um, and we don't have a problem this course with using 9.8, so um, because we are, we are conscious that it's taught that way in different units, but I'll be using 9.81 for my value for G throughout. So in question one, we actually have all the ingredients we need to make say the EP equal to mgh. We have all of our values in the correct unit, so that'll be 20 times 9.81 times 3.5. Entering that in, we'll get a value for our energy. That's 686.7 joules. Again, um, our answers will all be in joules if we're using the correct units for everything else. Question two asks us, what height must a drum of mass 100 kilograms be suspended above the ground that possesses four kilojoules of potential energy? So let's take a look at what we know. The mass is 100 kilograms. And we wish it to have a um, potential energy of four kilojoules. And always look out for this. That is the same as 4,000 joules. We were asked at what height do we need? So we know that our formula is potential energy is equal to mgh. So we need to rearrange this formula to find the h. And the simplest way to do this is to divide both sides by m and then divide both sides by g. We can do this in one step. We get ep over mg is equal to h, or we could write that as h is equal to ep over m times g, like that. So having written all of that out, we can now work out the answer to the problem. We know that our potential energy is 4,000 joules. We know that our mass is 100. And we know that our value for G is 9.81. So we have everything we need. And we can calculate the required height so that this drum has a potential energy of 4 kil kilojoules or 4,000 joules. Our answer is 4.08 two decimal places, and that's meters, because height is always measured in meters in these questions. So moving on to question three, we're asked to calculate the potential energy available from a reservoir holding 1,800 litres of water at a height of 260 metres. And the question helpfully tells us that one litre of water is the same as one kilogram of water. So we can actually just read what it says litres. We can think of that as 1,800 kilograms of water as well. Now, that is only true for water. Any other liquid um, uh, does not uh, generally have the same 
density is water, so that would not be a value of heat. But this question it is what we need and what we have. So we know from that that the mass is 1800 or 1800, however you prefer to say, kilograms, and the height is 260 meters. So because we always know G, we can work out the value for EP, potential energy. It's mass times gravitational acceleration times height. And that's 1800 times 9.81 times 260. Because we've used the correct unit through it, we'll get an answer which is in joules. And the exact answer our calculator gives us here is 4591080. So that's 4,591,080 um, joules, which seems like a suspiciously accurate answer, and it, and it is. We would probably um, be more inclined to rate that as something like 4.59 megajoules. Remember, if we're converting from kilojoules, to joules, we can multiply by a thousand. We can also divide by a thousand to go back to kilojoules or divide by a million to take us back to megajoules. So that would be a more accurate answer in terms of what we probably be certain would be true. But it's not incorrect to write this down in this course. I'd be happy with that. Um, but generally moving forward in engineering calculations, we would tend to give this level of accuracy. Let's look at the next few questions as well then. Question four, metal piles are driven into the ground using a pile driver. The driver is raised to a height of five meters above the ground and then released. Calculate the weight of the driver if the potential energy stored when it is lifted is 9,810 joules. And that number should look a little bit suspicious to you, 981. Um, the good reason for that as well. We'll find out in a second. So what's question four telling us? It's telling us that the height is five meters and that the potential energy is 9,810 joules. And we've been asked to find the mass. Well, actually that's a little bit poor in the question. The question says we've been asked to find the weight. So we can work out the weight as well. We'll work out the weight first, actually. That's where we have to um, be a, a bit clever. Sometimes um, in these questions, it, it can use weight incorrectly. So what we should see is that the weight of an object is not the same as the mass. The weight is equal to the mass times gravity. And it's measured in Newtons because weight is a downward force. But you'll notice that it has mg here. So if we say our potential energy, is equal to mass times gravity times height. It's the same as saying that potential energy is equal to weight times height. And we can work out what the weight is by doing 9810 is equal to the weight times the height, which is five. So the weight is 9810 um, divided by five. And we can work out what that is equal to. So one thousand nine hundred and sixty-two, and that's newtons because of the force. But it would be fair to say that's not what we'd be expecting this question to ask us in this unit. Instead, we might be more interested in what the mass is. That's what our questions usually ask as well. If we know the weight is um, one nine six two. And we know that the value for G is 9.81, then mass will be equal to 1962 divided by 9.81. And that's where our suspiciously um, detailed value for energy comes in, because this works out as exactly 200 kilograms. Um, ordinarily, we would have asked you for the mass in that question. Instead of doing what we did there, you'd have just gone straight to finding the mass from our potential energy formula. But it's important that we do respect the difference between weight and mass when we're dealing with engineering and physics. And that's why I've chosen 
to solve the question in two, two stages like that to show you there is actually a difference um, and uh, what that difference is in terms of our calculation. But for an assessment question in this course, we wouldn't be asking you anything about the weight, we just ask you to find the mass. Look at question five now. A fairground roller coaster has many high and low points on the track. The highest point at the beginning of the ride is a height of 50 metres, and at the end is 5 metres. What is the change in potential energy between the start and end for a person of mass 80 kilograms? Now, there's two ways to solve this question. We could work out the potential energy at the start, we could work out the potential energy at the end, and we could take them away. Or we could recognise that we just need to subtract the two heights to work out the, diff, the potential energy. Because if our roller coaster, and I'll do a very poor sketch here, looks a bit like this. And this point here is five meters above the ground. And this is our high point, which is 40, sorry, which is 50 meters above the ground. And this point is 50 meters above, is the same has been 45 metres above the point that it actually drops down to on the ride. So we could do the whole calculation using 45 metres as a height. And if you spot that, then that's going to save us a bit of time. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to recognise that we can use 45 metres as our height. However, if you didn't spot it, what you could have done instead was worked out the potential energy at a height of 50 metres, worked out the potential energy at a height of 5 metres, and then subtracted the two and you would get the same answer as what we're about to do. And the mass we're told is 80 kilograms. So we work out the potential energy based on this. The EP is equal to MGH, and that's equal to 80 times 9.81 times 45. And this will just give us in one calculation the final answer, which would be the same answer if you'd done MGH with H is 50, and then done MGH with HS5 and subtracted them, you get the same as this answer here. And the answer it gives us is 35,316 joules. I'd probably say 35.3 kilojoules would be about as accurate as we could be with that, but it's okay to leave your answer like that. But in this case, we will. And finally, we'll look at question six. A steeplejack, which is not a profession that's in a lot of demand these days, but they do still exist because we still need to be able to repair different types of roofs. But a steeplejack has a potential energy of 2,000 joules. So let's write that down. When you scale the ladder to height of 10 metres, what amount of potential energy will you possess at a height of 50 metres? So, this is a, an interesting question um, because we can use the, inner, the information we've been given in the question. So what we could do here is we could say, well, hang on, we've got EP is equal to MGH. So I can do a bit of rearrangement. I can find that the mass of the steeplejack must be equal to EP divided by GH. And that's great. I can work out the mass and then I can use the mass to work out his potential energy at um, the height of 15 metres. And we can work out and it'll all work out fine. Um, but what we could also do is we could recognise that if he has 2,000 joules of energy at a height of 10 metres, then he'll have 3,000 joules of energy at a height of 15 metres. Because if we increase the height, 10 to 15, then this will be 50% bigger. So, so will the potential energy. But that might be a bit harder to spot than the trick in the previous question. So let's do it this way. Let's work out what his mass must be, first of all, and then we can calculate the new potential energy based on that. So that would be 2,000 divided by 9.81 times 10 at the bottom there. Uh, thanks for memory, this question gives a ridiculously light steeplejack, but we're not always too concerned about the real world when we're solving problems mathematically. Yes, if we work this out, it turns out the steeplejack weighs 20.3 kilograms. 
0.39 kilograms, which makes our steeplejack a child in this case, but we'll pretend that it's not a nonsense figure and use it anyway. So we can see then at a height of 15 meters that the energy is going to be equal to mass times gravity times height, gravitational acceleration, I should say, a mass of 20.39 times 9.81 times the new height of 15. Work that out. And we find out that that's 3,000 joules. Now, depending on what you've rounded this bit to, it'll have some decimal places afterwards, but I know it's 3,000 joules because of the argument I gave before. So we can round it to the nearest whole number um, confidently. So sometimes we might put a wee trick in the question, but when there is, there'll always be a way to solve it using just what you think is how to use the equation. So here we can work out the mass and use the mass and the new height to get the energy. Up here, when I did it with the little trick and I used the difference, I could have done two separate calculations and subtracted them. So um, we're never going to put the question in such a way that you couldn't solve it using the equation you've been given in the course notes. And that takes us to the end of the potential energy questions.